Okay, in this tutorial, and this is quite a quick tutorial, quite a simple task to do, you're just being asked to consider um, what the discharge of a river is and um, how, in this case, the river is different. So let's just have a, first of all, a little consideration of what we're seeing in these two photographs, and then have a look at the particular question you're being asked to answer. Now, this is a photo taken of the same river at two different times of the year. We can see clearly that we're in summertime in this photo because we've got lots of vegetation growth around our river. And we can see uh, in this photograph that it's wintertime because there's no leaves on the tree. Now, that has a, a, a distinct impact the time of year because wintertime is likely to be much wetter, which partly explains why there's a lot more water in this river. Um, and also, because there's no vegetation on the trees anymore, there's less vegetation to intercept and absorb rainwater. And therefore, all of the rain that falls on this uh, landscape or, or onto this drainage basin, and that's the land that surrounds this river, is probably not going to be absorbed by vegetation. Rather, it's just going to transfer across the surface into the river. Whereas here, a lot of the rain that falls on the landscape during summertime is actually going to hit these leaves and these plants and trees, not just near here next to the river, but on the, in the surrounding drainage basin, will absorb a lot of that water. So actually quite a lot of the water will never transfer down to this river because it's not just uh, absorbed, but then it's transpirated or evapotranspirated is the technical word, back up into the sky. So let's just, that's uh, that's what we're seeing in the photo. We're now thinking about discharge, and this is a really a key word in this um, section of the topic. As a matter of fact, from this point forward, we are going to be dealing with discharge. Uh, when we do our main river investigation after the summer, we are also going to be dealing with discharge. Okay, so what is discharge? Well, discharge is the um, volume of water passing a given point in the river every second. So if I put my um, little crosshair right here, and I that was me standing in the river, I could measure the actual amount, the volume that was flowing past me every single second. And if I jumped into the river here, I could measure the volume or the discharge of water passing me at this. And because water's moving, we can't just think of it as a volume, but it's a, it's a volume that's traveling. Um, and we call this Cumex. Okay. And Cumex stands for cubic meters per second. So this is what we measure discharge in. Okay, so discharge is measured in the cubic meters per second. Just think of it as the volume of water passing you every single second. And what's very clear in these two photographs, and this is the first descriptive difference, which will answer your question below, which you can see describe the differences between the two pictures, is that the discharge in the right-hand photo is clearly much higher. The river has a much higher discharge. Um, other things is that the river in the right-hand side is clearly deeper. And that's because there's far more water in it. The river is actually filling more of its channel now. We can see it's covering the entire channel, whereas here it's only covering a small portion of the channel. And therefore, the width has increased. If I was a kayaker, I would spot another difference. The river here is probably traveling much faster. Therefore, it is uh, its velocity is quicker on the right-hand side. Because there is less water, uh, because there's more water in the channel, it's actually flowing much easier. There is less friction in the channel on the right hand side. Whereas when we look at the left hand side, we can see because it's shallower, there's actually rapids developing here. And these rapids, these rocks in the river are actually slowing the river down, increasing the amount of friction. So there's a lot more friction in the left hand side picture, which causes the water to travel slowly. The right hand picture, because it's deeper and therefore there's the rocks are down at the bottom of this river at the moment. There's less friction and that causes it to travel faster. Final big difference that you can see is that the, the river looks much dirtier here. That actually is because it's got a lot more energy and therefore it's carrying a lot more sediment, okay, um, which is giving the brown color. This isn't pollution. This is just the fact there's a lot more um, sediment um, or what we sometimes call silt is being carried by the river because it has a lot more energy. Whereas in the left-hand picture, it's got very little energy, so it's not carrying much um, mud and sand and dirt, and therefore it looks much cleaner. So there you go. You should be able to use all my key ideas to um, answer this task.